Can I help you? Where's your phone? In the office. I need some change. Yes, sir. Now remember, take it easy and no gunplay. Forget the change, we want it all. Wait a minute. Did you can open it up and make it fast. Wait. Jack. Well, I told you no gun fight. I didn't know. I thought the old coop was going for a gun. Never mind that. Let's get out of here. Maxwell House Coffee, the amazing coffee discovery in the jar with the stars on top, presents Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring David Jensen. What a beautiful cup. Yep. But a cup is just a cup until there's coffee in it. That's what really counts in a cup. What a wonderful difference. 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 That Flavor Bud flavor makes. And only Instant Maxwell House has it. You can see the difference even before you taste it. Look, this amazing coffee discovery is not a powder, not a grind, but millions of tiny Flavor Buds of real coffee ready to burst instantly into that famous Maxwell House flavor. No coffee in any cup ever tasted so good before. That's why today more families buy instant Maxwell House than any other coffee of any kind. What a wonderful difference. 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 That Flavor Bud flavor makes. So for coffee that's good to the very last drop, reach for the jar with the stars on top. Instant Maxwell House. Have yourself a cup. Well, come on in, honey, and shut the door. Don't let this guy. You're Mr. Diamond, aren't you? That's right. My name is Marilyn. Marilyn Milholm. Well, it's very nice to know you, Marilyn. Would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Now, what can I do for you? I believe you were a friend of my brother's. Jack Milhone? You're Jack's kid sister? Mm -hmm. Well, how about that? Yeah, Jack and I went through the war together. Only the pictures he showed to you, you were about uh, this high and you had pigtails. You were a good friend of Jack's, weren't you, Mr. Diamond? I mean, a real good friend. Well, I still am, honey. Now, I haven't seen him in a couple of years, but... Well, why do you ask? Because you have to help him, Mr. Diamond. You just have to. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, now, cut that out, huh? You have to help him. Yeah, now, Marilyn, you control yourself. I'll do all I can for Jack, I believe me. Huh? Will you? Will you, honest? Well, sure I will. Now, suppose you tell me all about this, huh? The police, they're looking for Jack. He killed a man, Mr. Diamond. Jack killed a man. What happened? Police questioned Daddy and me this morning. Jack and another man held up a gas station. Jack killed the owner. That's what they told me. Well, it doesn't make sense, Marilyn. Why would Jack try a hold up? He's a mechanic. He has a good job. But he's changed, Mr. Diamond. Said he was tired working for his salary. Said he wanted to make some big money. Well, I don't know what I can do if what you say is true. I... He needs help. When the police find him, he might try to fight. But if he'd give himself up, things might be easier for him, mightn't they, Mr. Diamond? I mean, at least he'd have a chance. Now, all this has come pretty fast for me. I just don't know what to think. If I can help Jack, if I can help him, I sure will. Now, suppose you go on home and, uh, 
I'll see what I can do. You will find him. Please. I'll try. You sure there's no mistake, Mac? No mistake, Rick. Everything the girl told you, it's true. I just can't believe it. Well, it's all right here. Milhone and a punk named Adams tried to hoist the station. The owner was stubborn and Milhone shot him. Cop on the beat came running and grabbed Adams, but Milhone got away. Now, Adams said Milhone did the shooting. It's all right here in the statement. Now, how do you know Adams didn't do the shooting himself? Rick, you're grabbing at straws. No matter who had the gun, the other's an accessory. He won't get off any easier. Yeah, I know. Oh, it makes you mad, Mac. You got a friend, a guy you share a foxhole with. A guy you joke with, a guy you talk seriously with. And this guy turns out to be a killer. And that makes you mad because you're a cop. And you know how the law has to treat killers. Your men turn up any leads on him yet? No, this is all we've got so far. Since Milhone quit his last job, he's kept bad company. Been picked up for questioning the last couple of months, but never booked. Here's a list of the men he's been seen with recently. All drifters, no goods. You mind if I keep this? No, I've got a copy. Oh, and he's, uh, he's been seeing a girl, too, named uh, Eve Miller. She used to sing in an uptown club. I can't get a line on her now. Well, maybe I can. We've already checked most of the names on that list, but if you come up with anything interesting, let me know. You hear? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, see you around, right? Uh, no, Rick. Yeah. I know you and Milhone were buddies in the war, but if you catch up with him, don't let your guard down. Remember, this guy's a killer. Uh, don't worry, Mac. I only wish I could forget. <laughs> I decided to save the names on Lieutenant McGough's list for last. I had a friend, Bill Blake, who was a pretty good source of information. He was an ex-con who was making an honest living pushing a hack. Oh, hi, Rick. Ah, Bill, you know where I can find Jack Milhone? Gee, I'm sorry, Rick. I wish I could help you, but, uh... Say, just a minute. The last time I heard Milhome was running around with a dame by the name of, uh, Eve Miller. Eve Miller? You know where I can find him? Not exactly, Rick. You see, I never met her. But it seems to me that she, uh, she used to work in one of those small nightclubs uptown. Well, that's the only thing I have to go on. I guess I might as well check it out. Well, you got yourself a fair. Okay. Bill drove me uptown and we started making the rounds of the small clubs. After the fourth one, I struck pay dirt. The manager of the club told me that Eve Miller had worked there once. Now, he didn't know where she was living now, but one of the dancers named Jane Thomas used to room with her. I was in luck. Jane Thomas was in her dressing room getting ready to make some publicity stills. Now, most girls are a little touchy about answering questions asked by strangers. So I figured the best way to get Miss Thomas to open up was to fill the air with the sound of wedding bells and the sweet smell of orange blossoms. Uh, Miss Thomas, ma'am, could I speak with you for a minute? Oh, uh, excuse me, ma'am. I didn't know you weren't dressed. All right, funny man. What do you want? Uh, my name is Thurlow Anderson, and uh, I'm from Texas. So where's your cowboy hat? You see, people are always making bad jokes about the clothes we Texans wear. And Well, when I got into town, I went over to one of those shops on Madison Avenue, and I, I bought me this suit. You like it? What do you think this is, a fashion show? Say what you gotta say and get out of here. Oh, well, ma'am, I thought maybe you could uh, help me find Miss Eve Miller. What do you want to see her for? Well, uh... Well, it, it, it's like this, ma'am. Uh, Miss Eve sang once in a, in a nightclub in Sweetwater, Texas. That's uh, my home. <laughs> and, and, well, she was just so sweet and pretty and... I fell in love with her right off. Are you sure you're talking about Eve Miller? Oh, yes, ma'am, Miss Eve. And Well, I, I didn't have any money then, and uh, well, I couldn't ask a girl like Miss Eve to come live in an old farmhouse, could I? You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Well, well you see, there was this man, and uh, he asked me if I minded if he 
So he put up an oil well on my property. And I told him I didn't mind, so he put up his old oil well. See, now this is a mighty cute little old dog, man. Well, don't stop there. What happened? Well, what happened where? With the oil well. Oh, well, shucks, there weren't any oil in that old oil well. Well, as well. <laughs> uh, uh, but then one day, one day, well, that man, he was a persistent cuss. And one day he put a well out in the South 40 and uh, <laughs> it was a gusher. And, oh, we got six, seven, eight wells. Uh, and, and, and that's why I thought that maybe, or maybe Miss Eve would consent to be my bride now. Well, you know, mister, I, I think maybe your figuring is right. Well, that's why I thought maybe if you'd give me Miss Eve's address, I'd be mighty obliged. Well, uh, Eve didn't want me to tell anyone where she'd moved to, but you're sort of special, and I'm sure she'd want to see you. Oh, I just had a thought, ma'am. Uh, now, she ain't married, is she? No, but... Oh, uh, ain't that a, that's a relief off of my mind. But, uh... She has a boyfriend hmm. named Jack Milhone. Well, I, I sort of expected that, ma'am, because, well, a girl as pretty as Miss Eve's bound to have a boyfriend. Eve's changed a lot since you knew her. This Milhone, he's a pretty tough guy. <laughs> that, that don't scare me. If I could just have Miss Eve's address, I'm mighty anxious to see her again. Oh, sure. Oh. Here you are. Well, now, now I can't thank you enough, man. And, and, and listen here, we'll give you an invite to the wedding, eh? Oh, please do. Uh, I'd love to come. Now, you sure you can find it all right? Well, now, I, I found this little old nightclub, didn't I? And this is a long way from Texas. <laughs> well, but just thanks a lot, ma'am, and uh, so long. Oh, wait a minute, mister. Yes, ma'am? Um, say, uh, with, uh, if Eve doesn't turn out to be the way you remembered her, well, I mean, if things just don't work out, I'd be very glad to show you around New York. Now, that is mighty nice of you, ma'am, and, and, and I'll remember. I sure will. Well, uh, bye. Bye. Oh, well, good luck. Western Union. Fly it under the door. Well, I can't. It's a singing telegram. That's a big joke. Well, now, honey, you open the door and we'll both laugh. Okay, what is it, bud? I don't know you. Well, you do now. Do you mind if I come in? Yeah. What are you selling? What are you buying? Look, I got no time for a wise acre. Now, just a minute, Eve. Suppose I told you I wanted to help a friend of yours. Suppose I was serious. What do you mean? Jack Milhone. He's also a friend of mine, and he's in trouble. And you really want to help him? That's right. Let him in, Eve. I believe him. Hello, Jack. Hello, Rick. It's been a long time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, too long. Too long. You, uh, you figure this is a good place to hide? It's the only place I can hide. Till I get my hands on some dough. Are you serious, Rick? You really want to help me? Yeah, yeah. You're a good guy. I need some dough. Can you get me some dough? Now, Jack, the best way I can help you is to get you to... to give yourself up. And I thought you said you were my friend. That's the only reason I let you come in here. I am your friend, Jack. But you can't run forever. It'll be better if you don't run at all. You got a gun, Rick? Yep. And I'm just as close to mine as you are to yours. I'm closer than both of you. Sorry, Rick. Get your mate and whatever you can carry. We're leaving. I'm sorry we can't talk about old times, Rick. I'd like to talk about the filling station attendant, the guy you killed. 
Look, don't hand me any speeches. Now, I had to do that. He tried to stop us. That's your only reason? You're not sorry? I'm sorry I got mixed up in this. I'm sorry there's cops on my tail. Well, Jackie boy, your sister was right. You really have changed. You darn right I've changed. I got tired of slaving under the hood of a car for 60 bucks a week. I like clothes like this. A dame like that. Look, I've always liked you, Rick. But I know what I want and I know how to get it. You live your life and I'll live mine. I'm ready. Okay, let's have the wallet. Now, Jack, listen. Don't give me any speeches. Just hand her the wallet. Count it. 20, 30, 3, 4. Well, there's only 34. Rupert said we'd need at least 100. Now you can talk Rupert into making up the difference. After all, he's your brother. You go over and see him at the merry-go-round. I'll join you there later. Now, you're making a big mistake, Jack. Come on, hurry up. Sorry, Rick. We needed a head start. <laughs> What a wonderful difference. What a wonderful difference. What a wonderful difference. 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 That Flavor Bud flavor makes. And only one coffee has it. Instant Maxwell House. You can see the difference even before you taste it. Look, it's not a powder, not a grind, but millions of tiny Flavor Buds of real coffee, ready to burst instantly into that famous Maxwell House flavor. No coffee in any cup ever tasted so good before, left you so deeply satisfied. Nothing else is just as good. That's why today, more families buy and enjoy Instant Maxwell House than any other coffee of any kind. So for coffee that's good to the very last drop, reach for the jar with the stars on top. What a wonderful difference. 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 That Flavor Bud flavor makes. Instant Maxwell House. Have yourself a cup. Rick. Rick, can you hear me? Hmm? He's coming around. Are you okay, Diamond? Oh, what a question to ask a bleeding man. No, he's okay. Oh, my oh. head. Well, it's what you get for coming over here by yourself. Why didn't you let us know you'd located Eve Miller? Because I didn't think Jack would be here. I thought I could talk to Eve alone and she'd open up more for me. She opened up all right. You're a scalp. Lieutenant, that is unfunny and untrue. Now, Jackie boy did this. <clears throat> what time you got? Four o'clock. Oh, I must have been out for about an hour. I got here around three. Uh, we got a tip a little while ago that Eve Miller was living here. We arrived about five minutes ago. You could have tipped us over an hour ago and we might have nabbed Millhone. Okay, okay. I tried to tell you why. Oh. You better stay where you are. Sit down. No, that's all right. I'm okay. But that former buddy of mine swings a mean gun. Well, have you any idea where they might have gone? No, but I know they need money for a getaway. They took 34 of my dollars. Yeah, I heard Eve say that Rupert told them they'd need at least 100. Who's Rupert? Oh, well, just a guy with a name you can't forget. No, he's Eve's brother. He didn't... Well, I guess you might as well answer. Yeah, it might be my office. I left this address. Hello? This is Lieutenant McGo. Oh, just a minute. I was right. It is my office. Oh, that's great, Mac. Would you like to come back next week for another question? Okay, okay. Yes? Yeah, right away. New case? Same case. They just picked up Eve Miller trying to pawn a mink coat. Let's go and talk to her. Be my guest. I've told you I don't know. Now, listen, you were with Milhone an hour ago. The two of you left your apartment after he slugged Diamond. Where did you go? I forget. You and Milhone needed money to get out of town. Now, you left him somewhere while you tried to pawn a mink coat. Where were you supposed to meet him? It escapes me. Rick, what was that you started to tell me about her brother? Well, Eve said Rupert told Jack and her they needed at least a hundred bucks. Was Rupert going to arrange her transportation out of town, Eve? Go ask him. Fine. Where is he? Finding people is your job. 
Not mine. Why don't you let her cool off in the cell a while, Mac? Yeah, I guess maybe I should. Give you a chance to think, Eve. Think of how the judge is gonna feel when he finds out you helped the murderer escape. Riker? Come on. We'll give her a half hour. And then we'll grill her, but good. Edwards, see if we've got anything in the files on Rupert Miller. Yeah, right now. Say, Mac, Milhone told Eve that he'd meet her and Rupert at the merry-go-round. There used to be a bar on 3rd Street by that name. Oh, there are about seven of them around town. Two or three more they call carousels. I'll have them checked out. Yeah, well, I'll do a little checking myself. Now, if we can get Rupert, we ought to be able to lay our hands on Jack. Yeah. I hope that whack on the head convinced you, Rick. If we do catch up with him, it'll probably get pretty rough. Yeah. Well, what about his kid sister? You promised her we'd bring him in alive. Well, I tried, and I'll try again. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nothing in the record about Rupert Miller. I guess I better get the boys out on the merry-go-rounds. Yeah, I'll see you later. Oh, just a minute, Rick. If you turn up anything interesting, you're going to tell me now, aren't you? That I will. Yeah. And if I'm not lucky, don't you wait up, Dan. Now, I know a lot of characters, and a lot of characters know me. But nobody seemed to know this character, Rupert Miller. But then I got lucky when I found Breezy Jones in a penny arcade. You got any free games going, Breezy? Hiya, Ricky boy. Man, look at that score. I'm a whiz at this game, I tell you. Yeah, well, tell me something else, Breezy. Tell me where I can find a guy. Ah, Ricky. Not me. You know me. I don't sell info. Too many of my pals start mistrusting me. Well, just this once, Breezy. Here, I'll finance you to a day of games. Ah, Ricky. And look at that score. This guy's name is Rupert Miller. What's he done? Not a thing. I just want to talk to him. Well, Rupert, he uh, bummed around on and off for several years. Uh, I hear Eternal Legit got a regular job. A pal of his named Tommy bought a business and gave Rupert a job. This pal on a bar called the merry go -Round? Bar? No, I bought one of those kid joints. What? A kitty joint. You know, a place where they got kitty games, rides, train swings, and all that stuff there. A merry-go-round. A real one. Sure, I think there's a merry-go-round there, too. It's on Mulberry Street, near uh, Five Points. Well, thanks, Breezy. There you go. I'll see you around. Thank you, Ricky. You're a sport. A real sport. I called Mac. He picked me up, and we drove out toward Five Points. It was almost five when we reached the kitty land. Okay, So what? I'll take it easy, pal. We love the name, if it belongs to you. Who are you guys? Look, I done nothing wrong. Now, come off it, Rupert. Eve told us everything. What are you talking about? She said you made the arrangements for Jack Milhone and her to get out of town. Look, you got this all wrong. You better straighten us out. OK, OK, but you got to understand I was just trying to help Eve out. She called me and asked me to pick up a second-hand car for her. I was only trying to help my sister out. You get the car yet? Yeah? yeah. You turn it over to Milhone? No, he and Eve said they'd dig up the dough to pay for the heat, meet me here in front of the merry-go-round at 5.30. Well, he won't make it, but Jack might. Jack said it was safe that way. We knock off at 5 o'clock, there won't be no one around. Come on. Mac called a squad car to take Rupert downtown, then he staked a few men around the kiddie land. He and I found a hiding place behind the kid-sized roller coaster. Uh, it's after 5.30 now, 5.39. I think the men are well hidden. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Can't you guess? Yeah. He's no good, Rick. I know, Mac, but still I... Mac.
okay, Rick. Take my gun. Go on, take it! We're gonna have to smoke him out of there, and we're in the best position. Ask your men to hold the fire. No! Now, Mac, we've got the best position, but he may take one or two good cops with him. Now, give me one more chance. All right. Hold your fire, man! This is McGo! Hold your fire! Jack? This is Diamond. Jack, can you hear me? I hear you, Rick. Come on. That's far enough. You come any closer, you drop that gun by your side. I'll drop it if you drop yours. You can talk from there. Now give it up, Jack. You're surrounded. You haven't got a chance. Let them take me. They'll pay. For me, they're gonna pay. Now that's no good, Jack. That's no good at all. Don't come any closer, Rick. You think I won't shoot because you are a friend? Well, I will. I'll kill you, Rick. You don't believe me, do you? You don't believe me? Well... to Jack. I really did. Remember how many steps you used to have to take to try and make perfect rice? You had to wash it, and rinse it, and drain it, and steam it. And even then, it often didn't turn out perfect. Well, with Minute Rice, all that work has been done for you. There's no washing, rinsing, draining, or steaming. Minute rice is already cooked. The only rice that is. One step to perfect rice. But one step? Just boil water. Yes, all you have to do is add minute rice to boiling water, cover it, and let it stand. One easy step to perfect rice. To rice that's always light, white, and fluffy. Rice that's always tempting, tender, and wonderfully delicious, no matter how you serve it. Get minute rice and see how true it is that when you use minute rice, the rice that's already cooked, it's just one step to perfect rice. has been brought to you by Instant Maxwell House, the amazing coffee discovery. What a wonderful difference that Flavor Bud flavor makes. Always good to the last drop. Tune in.